all of the engines of home performance that move heat and air around in our house hide what they are and how they are working, except for one. What I love about our ceiling fans is that they don't just not hide what they are. They actually try to make the mechanics of moving air beautiful. And we keep ours running on a low speed almost all the time because frankly, they are an integral part of our home's circulation system. Because our home is so efficient, airtight and insulated, the machines that ventilate and heat and cool the house are also very modestly sized. And so these become very important for moving the air around. They're also highly efficient, which is important when you're talking about electronic devices. These can move 10,000 CFM many times more than the, all the other engines in the house combined. And they only use about 30 watts if they're doing that. We very rarely have them turned up to high, but that is nice to know. My favorite part though is still that I can see the invisible dynamics of home performance at work in front of me all the time. So Fanimation fans are the ones that we picked for our forever home. And it's partly because they were on the Energy Star best of 2020 as far as energy efficiency. I will say it's not my favorite website to try and navigate and find things on, but the Energy Star website does have like products that are certified energy efficient and they've got a best of category and that's where these came from. So this is one of the most efficient fans in the world. And we're, this is the one that's going in most of the house. You'll see that we've got a couple different models going on. There are seven fans we've got installed inside the house and one will go on the covered deck that'll be out back. And these serve a really important function. A lot of people think, and the company that we are working with here will even tell you that you wanna blow air on people because that's what makes you cooler. That's not really what we're doing with these fans. Of the 45,000 cubic feet of air I've got in my house, only 1,000 of it is being pulled and pushed around by my heating and cooling system. That's not a lot. Normally, you're gonna wanna have all that air be passing through a circulation system so that it's, the, the air is coming out into the room and it's really banging around and mixing the air. That's not gonna be happening. You're gonna have filtration happening more often if you can circulate a lot of that air through the system more often. Uh, you can also do things like condition it, like dehumidify it. So all of that is a loss that we're experiencing as we build more and more efficiently. So these systems become our circulation systems because the air that's coming out in a bedroom like this one, for example, it's about 100 CFM of heated and cooled air bolstered by a little bit of fresh air from outdoors, which is part of our ventilation system, which is a totally separate duct system. And you wanna watch that video apart from this. But this system is going to enable us to mix the air around in the room so that you don't end up with a couple of different things. Stratification is something that happens when you have warm air just rise naturally to the top part of the room and cool air sink, which leads to weird temperature differences between the top and the bottom of the room. And I've seen that plenty of times with an infrared camera as I wander around my clients' homes. You also won't get pooling where the air comes out really slowly into the room from the grill and then it just kind of hangs out right there. These fans are incredibly efficient. We went looking for fans that were not only very beautiful, but also we're gonna be the top of the line as far as efficiency. And I'm not really big on energy efficiency in general. It's not my go-to term. But I will say when you're talking about motors, things that are moving air or liquid or pumps, things like that, the baseline for how awesome they perform is their work per the energy that you put into them. So these fans are all 420 CFM per watt. There's really not anything the else that you're using in your house that's pulling that small of an amount of energy. So I'm gonna have these all ideally on low speed all the time. As you know, we're really big on trying to tell the story of the science of homes and Fanimation actually is unique among fan manufacturers. They have the Fan Museum. Uh, which is in Indiana. And we started working with them just this year during all of the quarantine stuff. So we haven't made it to Indiana, but I would like to see that museum sometime because I, I like the history of things. You can see uh, that it's modular. So we've got the blades, the fan blades come in a separate box. This is the fan motor and all the trim pieces and everything that kind of form the central 
shaft of the fan. And the wiring for this is actually really beautifully simple, which I was very happy about because I was worried for a second that maybe I had not had the electricians do the right thing. This is the beautiful part about the installation of this. This is the remote control. So you've got a switch that's gonna turn the fan on and off. But all the fine tuning, where in a normal fan that you would just get off the shelf, you have the two silly chain things that you're constantly you know, bumping up out of the way and they get wrapped up around the fan. This is a wireless control. And so the wireless is gonna communicate with this. And what you need to do before you forget and put this into your fan and then try and control it is you need to tune them to the same frequency. So this funky thing is the receiver. And it's got a set of little tabs here that you build the code into that matches the one that's on the back of the remote control. So you just need to know which combinations I've done so far. Don't leave it on the default, because then if you install all your fans, you do one thing with one of the remote controls and it'll control all the fans in the entire house. You can see here that they're describing the down rod that you would wanna pick for this. In general, I would say I overestimated how far I wanted to drop these fans down. Most fan companies, they're talking about the fan blowing on you to cool you off, not necessarily the more sophisticated use that we're using it for, which is just to circulate the air for the entire house. And if you want that, then you should have the fan be closer to you. Like obviously a fan, a you know, floor mount fan that's right next to your face is gonna cool you off a lot. Likewise, if you put a fan 10 feet up in the air, you're not gonna feel the effect of it. It's as long as you don't want to actually feel air blowing on your skin, which we do not, unless it's super hot inside, which it should never be because my house is super airtight and super insulated. Also, this may look like wood, it's not wood. It's very beautiful and it's really hard for even me to tell the difference. But if it was actually wood, it would expand and contract at different rates. Also, wood is gonna be a lot heavier than plastic. Then you turn on the breaker to activate power, turn on the wall switch, and you press learn on the remote control. The fan then goes into this high speed mode to make sure that it's properly balanced and that it's, everything is operating as supposed to be. And you're all set. So then you just mount this on the wall wherever you want or just put it on your bedside table and you're done. And now we have a perfectly silent and also very efficient way to just keep the house as comfortable as possible while also having it be super airtight, super insulated, and have a small HVAC system. So to me, this home's performance, how comfortable it is, how humidity controlled and temperature even it's gonna be throughout the house is dependent on us having these fans run throughout the house. So I hope that you have picked up some tidbits for your own home build or for your existing home that you're trying to improve. Please do make sure that you subscribe to our channel to learn a lot more about this house and about all the ways that you can test and scientifically tune home performance in all areas. Comment if you have anything else to add about fans and about the use of outside forces, aside from just a simple old heating and cooling system. Make sure that you also like this video and join our Patreon membership if you wanna kind of be on this journey, get a lot more behind the scenes content as well. Tune in next time.